Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial on shade designs. Today I'm going to show you guys how to place an image behind a brush tool. And what I mean by that is something similar to this type of work. As you can see we use a brush to make this type of specific uh, effect and we're going to apply an image which is this image layer here. Uh, we're going to put the mask tool onto it and we're going to apply it from behind the brush uh, effect. So something like this. See how I'm moving uh, the image because the image is placed behind that. Okay, so if I want to pass the image to appear in the white space, it's only in the specific area that I chose. And by that, I'm going to apply to do this on a wallpaper. Okay, so we're going to start off by creating a wallpaper. I'm going to show you guys how to do it um, in in the simplest way as possible and the quickest way possible as well. But before we do that, let's just look at uh, um, the Twitter page. This is my Twitter page. You can follow me at twitter.com forward slash shade designs and you'll be able to follow um, with all my updates, all the work that I've done. And at the same time, I also have a Facebook fan page which is facebook.com forward slash shade designs and I also post all my work, my recent uh, artworks and comments and things like that, tutorials, logos that I've made, all the work that i you know done will be also posted on this page. So just make sure that you follow me both on these two social media websites. Okay, so let's go back to our Photoshop document. Okay, first of all, we're going to get um, a large image. Since this is going to be a wallpaper, a wallpaper requires the size to be a large, so um, different computer sizes have different uh, screen resolution size. So this is an iMac at the moment that I'm using. Um, it's a 21.5 inch iMac and um, the screen resolution I think it's about 1920 by I think like 1200 or something but I don't know. But you know if you want the wallpaper to fit you know precisely nicely onto your screen just make sure you, just, you check out the screen size of the computer and uh, it will give you the um, the understanding or what's it the, the boundaries you know like to look for when you're searching or not searching like when you want to to, to design the wallpaper for your computer because some it's because some of our wallpapers it turns out you know when you you know you complete it in Photoshop it looks nice when you want to apply it on your desktop it's a bit stretched, it's a bit wide, so that's the important reason why that you get the screen size. Okay, so we're going to first of all get um, a wallpaper or an image. I just I just searched for um, Apple wallpaper size and I just got this image. And just make sure that your image size is selected at large as always. Uh, because we don't want was it, our image to be uh, blurry like when we stretch it, okay. So we're just going to copy that. And we're going to do post it in our document. And as I said, the size of this document, if you want to use it, is 1920 by 1200. Now, this can be different to your computer because your computer screen like might be smaller or be far larger. It just it depends on what uh, screen type you're working on. And um, yeah, but just for the normal standard size, I would say it's, yeah, this is the same size. Okay, we're just going to go on and we're going to paste this image. Okay. So now since that image is pasted, what we're going to do is we're going to, let me just uh, up the size here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hide this layer. Okay, so we'll come back to the layer first and then now we're going to apply a brush tool. Now what a brush tool is, um, it's like, you know, a, a paintbrush, you know, like a normal paintbrush that you use for painting. You know, they all have different techniques and ways to, um, you know, like when you apply them on your canvas, you know, they all have a different shapes. So that's the same thing, um, you know, in the Photoshop uh, paintbrush, okay? It's, uh, it, it allows you to create, you know, for patterns and things like that. And you could download this heaps of them, uh, was it free on the internet. Just search for free Photoshop paintbrushes and you'll be able to download a whole, you know, a whole a set of them. Okay, so we're going to click on to the paintbrush tool, which is just below the the spot healing brush okay um, so that's the one and then we're going to click on here so once you click on to this you'll be able to see that these are the pre-installed or some other pre-installed uh, paint brush types that come with Photoshop and as I said earlier you can download paint brushes and then you can install them on your Photoshop on your computer and it's a great way of just you know, building up your Photoshop your library okay so I'm just going to go with um, one that I have, which is uh, where did it go? 
where did it go? I uh, think it's this one, okay? It's, well, there's a number to it, but it doesn't make sense. But you know what? It's a. Uh, just gonna click on that, okay? And as I said, look, you can always play around the sizes. You can put small size, uh, what's it, shapes, so you can make them large. But uh, I mean, by if you, if you select uh, a large one for that matter, um, and when you try to apply it, okay, we're just going to actually create a new layer because it doesn't allow us to place any uh, things onto a layer that you can't see. So just going to create a new layer on top of that. And then now, as you can see, this is the size that we selected. And once you paste it, that's how it looks like. Um, and as I said, you could always, you know, keep going. You could get smaller ones. You know, it's just yeah, you're all. It just depends on your creativity. You know, like what you want to do. Okay, so we're just gonna go back to our history and we go to new layer. So that's what we want. Okay, now we're gonna go to the same uh, pen brush and we're gonna increase that size to um, nine hundred. Will do. Okay, so we get something like this. Actually, we're gonna make a bit higher than that because I want a good size uh, image. Go to yeah, that looks nice. Yep, go to and just place it in the center of the page. Okay, I'm just gonna place it like that. Now, the color that we applied, um, it doesn't matter because we're gonna place the image behind this uh, paintbrush. So, go back to our document in which we pasted our um, actually, so go to our layer that we pasted our photo, and as you can see, it's already hidden because we ticked the hidden uh, icon or the eye. Um, so click on that and then now you can see that our image is placed behind it. Now there's various ways that you can play around with this wallpaper. You could do whatever you want, but my main um, my main goal is to place the Apple for logo uh, in the center of the actual, uh, you know, the splash paint, as you could call it. Um, so we're going to go to, um, now uh, uh, if you want, you could also play around with the blending of options as we did in the previous tutorials. And you can just go to, you know, click on to multiply. You can see it's in a speed change. And you can make that into red. It looks like blood or something like that. So it's just a, you know, um, it's just a way that you, you know, you just keep to keep playing around with Photoshop until you get the right um, specific, um, what's it, the right specific uh, texture or or something that you want to get out from Photoshop, okay? So we're gonna go to our layer, uh, actually the photo of our layer, and we're gonna place that on top of the first layer, which is the paint one. And as you can see, our paint, and as you can see, our paint is um, is gone. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, we're gonna get, uh, yeah, we're gonna go, oh, sorry about that. Uh, our layer is, if he, um, <laughs> what was I gonna say? Sorry about that. Okay, so the layer that we've been working on, which is the photo, as you can see, um, it's it's on top of the pen brush uh, was a for layer, and that's the something that we want to place because if we want to place an image behind a certain object, like the one that we just did, like this type one. This was a for paint brush because we want to place the image in the paint uh, in the pink area, so we don't want to place it in the white area. So in order to do that, like you have to place the image on top of that layer, which is important. And then it's a quick, yes, you know, like it's a quick, yes, simple step. And then of course, like you might have seen these, uh, was it for techniques for used in for magazines and things like that, you know. Um, okay, so we're gonna go to layer and we're gonna click down to create clipping mask. As you can see, you already applied that. Um, as you can see, our layer does um, a new little uh, arrow pointing down below. So that means that this layer is masked onto our bottom layer, which is underlined at the same time. Okay, so now we could also move around the image to how we want it. So we're going to move the, uh, what's it, I want to get the Apple logo. So go to, so just click on to your first icon, the moving uh, tool, and we're going to you know, move our image up to about here. And as I said, was it? It will also show you like um, was it your even your your image? So the gray lines they could see um, so the gray line just shows that like where your image is placed. For example, if I move my image bit up, as you can see, the pink will be if I revealed, and we don't if I want that. We want uh, our image to be big, so like we so it allows us a big space. Um, for us to move around with, okay. So we're gonna just place it right there. So because we also want to get part of the stitching in the photo, okay. 
Now, once that is placed, you're going to go back to our layer, which is the paintbrush one. As you can see, it's no longer pink. It's covered by the image. And we're, click on, and we're going to click on to blending if options. So right-hand click and go to blending options. And then from there if onwards, we're going to play around with the... Um, we're going to play around with... Uh, looking for without a glow or things like that. You know, um, so let's go to the inner glow. I'm going to go to... I'm going to select uh, bluish paint. So you can see now we just applied, um, so you can for red. And so as you can see, he applied a blue ink, um, a blue for glow, which is an, an inner glow. Which, as you can see, that the glow also has sparked onto the image, which means that they'll think the image is a bit of uh, a bit of a bluish, but it's not. It's just creating um, the inner glow on the pink, uh, was it splash paint layer, as you could call it. And if you want, you can just um, increase the size, and so you can you can just increase the size, and yeah, you can just play around with it. Um, also, if you want, so you know, uh, professional photographers when they want to develop your photos, that you know, that you might pay a couple of um, hundred dollars or something to get your photos developed. So this is what they do: they just create a template, and then they apply your photo behind that template and they just say print it up so that's so this is the thing they do um you know and it's see as you can see it just it took us yeah, less than yeah, 10 minutes um no it just took us like less than yeah, five minutes just to create this and you can see that just creating this you know they're, they're charging you you know like 150 dollars you know just for that quick job so you can see that you could do this yourself you can find developing you can print your photos yourself so why not you know if, you know just learn the technique so that's it for today's for tutorial as I said before, you can just uh, follow me on Twitter and also on Facebook and just make sure that if you like this video to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, and also this video and all these um, things will be posted both on Twitter and Facebook. And if you have any questions or any queries, just please send me an email at shadedesigns at gmail.com. Until then, take care and peace.